Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients for any plant. It's a secondary nutrient, so it's not at the level of N, P, and K, the primary nutrients, but it is along the level of calcium and sulfur magnesium is considered a secondary nutrient. Well, magnesium is very important for plant growth, and it's really critical in the photosynthesis process. And when you think about it, really, that's what plants are out here to do, to take that sunlight energy, convert it into some kind of grain that we're going to grow and use for food or for farmers raise as a cash crop. So if we don't have enough magnesium out there, that's going to be very important. But where we're at, our clays are really blessed with lots of magnesium in them, and in the case of this soil right here, too much magnesium at times. In the Montmorillonite clays, we actually have a lot of magnesium present right in those clays. So in those types of soils, magnesium is more than not a problem that you have too much and not too little. So what we're looking at here is not necessarily parts per million. In other words, if you had a very high amount of calcium in your soil and a very high amount of potassium and even hydrogen in your soil, then the magnesium, even though you might have quite a few parts per million, might not be too much. And the way that you can tell that is by getting a base saturation test run on your ground. So it's pretty simple. It's just part of a normal soil test. You just may have to request it at your particular lab, but it only costs a few extra dollars to run this test. And this base saturation test will tell you the ratio of magnesium to all the other elements that make up base saturation. So in other words, with magnesium, what we're looking for here is in the range of 12% up to about 25%. That's kind of considered the ideal range, and that is a great big range. So this is not saying that you have to get it, you know, exactly to 13% or anything like that. 12 to 25, roughly in there, you should be about ideal for your soil. And when we think about magnesium, you say, well, what can be the big problem if I've got a little more than 25% out of my soil? Well, the big thing is with magnesium, it's one of those nutrients that really ties up other nutrients in the soil and makes them unavailable. For example, when you look at magnesium compared to other elements like uh, calcium, for example, magnesium has a little stronger magnetic power. It's going to draw a little stronger. So on soils like this, you may consider putting out gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. What happens when you put it in a high magnesium soil is that magnesium will displace the calcium and tie up with that sulfate. And it makes Epsom salts, which can actually flush away if you have good drainage through your soil. So with magnesium, it's kind of like that guy, Brian, in high school that always wanted to dance with your date. That magnesium would come and, and attract onto that nutrient that you actually want in your soil and pull it away I'm uh, making it unavailable for you. So basically you're saying I'm magnesium, huh? <laughs> I don't know. You can be magnesium if you want to. <laughs> okay, so anyway, with magnesium, here's the other problem with it. It's very, very small. The molecular size is small compared to calcium that's really big. So the example I always like to give to farmers is this. I say, okay, let's just think that we're in a great big room, okay? And let's pretend that room is filled with basketballs. Okay, and so we're in this room, it's completely filled floor to ceiling with basketballs. Would we still be able to breathe? Everybody says, oh sure, yeah, there's pore space there and the air can get through between those basketballs. Okay, now let's say that we filled that whole room with sand floor to ceiling. Are we still gonna be able to breathe? Nope, we're dead. And the reason why is because there's not enough pore space. It's the exact same thing that happens in your soil. If like in this particular ground that we're standing in here, there's 40 to 50% magnesium, that's really high and there's not enough calcium there. So there are all these small particles that now are getting tight together and we don't have pore space going through there. We don't have oxygen going through there. It's going to be tight, poorly drained, and it's not very fit for crop growth. What you end up with is a soil that in the spring is so tight and so sticky, a lot of farmers will say, well, well, just like this field, we have to work that in the fall, yep. otherwise it's gonna be impossible to deal with in the spring. Or the other side of it is, all right, if I do work it in the spring, if it's wet, all of a sudden I create concrete out in my field, and now that field's hard for the whole rest of the year, and there's really no way to overcome that. So like Darren said a little bit ago, our suggestion is to do gypsum out there. You could also put lime out there to raise the calcium percentage in ratio to the magnesium percentage. Now hold on, because when you talk about lime, most people think if I'm adding lime to the situation, I'm trying to raise my pH. And many times we're talking about low, heavy, poorly drained soil where the pH is rising already and we may have a pH issue there. Why would you add lime in that situation? Yep, because you have to look at what your calcium to magnesium ratio is. And all I'm getting at is if you had a very high pH and you also had really high calcium levels and low magnesium levels, well, then it's not gonna do you any good to put more lime out. But if you have high pH 
and you have high magnesium percent compared to the calcium, then you can throw lime out and you don't have a lot of risk of raising that pH because there isn't a whole bunch of free calcium. There's all kinds of free magnesium that's causing problems and chances are in those types of soils you have very poor drainage. So you got to look at Let's not just take the band-aid approach and throw the lime out there. Let's also fix the core problem, which is poor drainage. In those types of fields, like in this one, we put some tile in here a few years ago, and personally, I think we need even more tile than what we've got. But the point is, we've got to get the drainage good. We've got to improve that drainage, allow those salts to flush through, and over time, we'll lower the pH. Well, the other question with that, Brian, is, all right, so you're going to add more calcium to the situation to try and get that base saturation hooked up. How fast or how quickly can we decrease that magnitude? Magnesium yeah, it's slow. I mean, this is a lifetime project. So like on this field here, this is a demonstration field that we're using where we've got half of it where we put six tons of lime on four years in a row now compared to the other half where we've put no lime on. And this year we gained about six bushels in soybeans where we had this lime. I'm hoping that we're going to completely flip the switch here in about another three or four years and it'll get really a lot better. But honestly, this was a 20 year project in my book. Well, I do talk to farmers around the country and other farmers are having a little quicker results than we are. Of course, soils vary depending right. on where you're at. Some farmers are having really good luck using high rates of gypsum. Some farmers are having good luck using high rates of lime. The important thing is you can't just stay the same. If you say, you know what? I just have tons of magnesium out there. It's too much. My soil's tight and sticky. You know, ah, that ground just is never going to produce. So I'm not going to invest anything into that field. And we see a lot of neighbors right around our farm right here that are doing exactly that, that have just kind of given up on it. That say, man, it's just going to cost too much money to try and fix it. Yep. We're going to try some different things here and see what we can do. We are, but also you want to think about, do you really want to pay top dollar for ground like this? Absolutely no way. It's not even worth probably one third of our good ground. So if you've got stuff where the the magnesium percentage is 40%, 50%. Again, you know, I'd say that ground is worth a lot less money. You want to look at these things before you go out and buy ground. All right, well, we spent a lot of time on what do you do if you have too much magnesium? Of course, there is the opposite side of that equation. If you've got sandier soils or clays that don't have a lot of magnesium in there naturally, you may be low. You may be below that 12% on your base Tough saturation problem to test. solve, though, Darren. We throw some more magnesium out. That's the good thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of nice when, uh, hey, I just need to add a little bit of fertilizer and things are good. Uh, that's a pretty simple approach. But you do have to look at all these things. Magnesium is a very important nutrient for your crops. It is a secondary nutrient and it's very important in photosynthesis. If you're short, by all means, add some. If you've got way too much, don't listen to those people that say, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. There are things you can do. Try some things. Even like this field, you say, well, what are you trying out there? You know, you're just trying part of the field. Sure we are. We're not going to go broke trying all kinds of things, but we are going to try them on a small amount of acres, see if we can get things to work. And if we can, then we'll do it on the whole farm. Well, you don't have to try and experiment with a number of different weed control products to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what'll work on your farm coming up later in the show.